Um, so putting the recent immigration in historical and global context, the current wave of immigration to the U.S. is part of a centuries-old process. Um, we've been doing this for a long time, folks. As a matter of fact, we are a nation of immigrants outside of Native Americans, which we have not allowed to assimilate into our society. We are a nation of immigrants. Uh, underlying this immense and compact, complex population movement is, of course, the powerful force of the continuing uh, Industrial Revolution. Um, at times in our history, um, the type of uh, industries we had, manufacturing, um, uh, we needed more uh, unskilled laborers that, 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 it wasn't that they weren't skilled, but um, the manufacturing process had been uh, mechanized, and but it still employed a good number of folks um, with a, a, a livable wage. Um, now we don't have manufacturing all that much anymore, and uh, we've moved to service economies, and, and things are a bit different. Um, in the 19th century, population moved largely from Europe to the Western Hemisphere. Um, uh, but um, over the past 50 years, uh, the movement has been more from the south to the north, uh, being uh, s South Central America and Mexico um, up into the United States and Canada. This pattern reflects the simple geography of industrialization and the opportunity in the fact that uh, the more developed nations are in the northern hemisphere. Um, but, you know, uh, things like NAFTA uh, opened up free trade uh, zones that allowed some of those ind industries to move down into the south, down into Mexico, uh, and down into the Maquilatora zones. Um, this brought labor or labor opportunities closer to those living in the south, uh, but it also lowered the, the wages that uh, the companies had to pay. As a result of this of this relocation of uh, their uh, manufacturing processes, uh, labor, of course, continues to flow from the less developed nations to the more developed nations. This is the way it's been uh, operating for uh, a long time. Uh, the direction of this flow is not accidental or coincidental is determined by the differential rates of industrialization and modernization across the globe. Immigration contributes to the wealth and affluence of the more developed societies, and particularly to the dominant groups and elite classes of those societies. As it is in dominant minority uh, relationships, the dominant always wins. The immigration flow is also a response to the dynamics of globalization, particularly since the 1980s. Uh, the current era of globalization has been guided by uh, the doctrine of neoliberalism, or free trade, which urges nations to manifest, or it, it, it urges nations to eliminate barriers to the free movement of goods and capital, and by the international agencies that regulate the global economy. Uh, which ultimately pressure nations to reduce the size of their governmental sector. Um, if you think about our politics, this is what uh, the conservative side of our political spectrum has been arguing for um, since that, uh, uh, since the early 1980s. Uh, the combined result of these global forces is increasingly vulnerable groups of people in less developed nations, and that's by design. Um, if you allow free trade, unobstructed free trade, uh, there are ultimately, without a doubt, going to be winners and there are going to be losers. And if history tells us anything, there's going to be more losers than there are winners. Um, Americans tend to see immigrants as individuals acting of their own free will and often illegally 
But the picture changes when we see immigration as a result of these powerful global economic and political forces. When viewed through the lens of globalization, it's clear that this population movement will continue because immigration simply, or because immigrants simply have no choice. As I said before, immigrants are not moving to the United States because they woke up one day and said, I want to move to the United States. They're moving to the United States because something is happening um, that is forcing them to move. And those somethings uh, very well could be forces that are, are uncontrollable in reference to uh, their individual situations. Um, they could live in a indigenous tribe where the land that they've been occupying for some time uh, was privatized and the government came in and moved them out without any choice. So to think that immigrants are moving simply because they decided that they wanted to live in the United States um, is, is naive for sure. Um, of course, whether you're a new immigrant or an old immigrant, you're going to have some similar issues. Um, there's, when it's probably true that American society is more open and tolerant than ever before, we must not mistake declines in blatant racism and overt discrimination for the demise. And we're finding that out uh, uh, today um, where we're seeing a lot of those suppressed racist and discriminatory um, thoughts and actions uh, bubble up to the surface. When we thought in some respects uh, we wouldn't hear that anymore. Uh, gender issues and sexism remain on, of course, the national agenda. Most importantly, minority women remain the victims of double jeopardy and are among the most vulnerable and exploited segments of our society. Many female members of uh, the new immigrant groups find themselves in similarly vulnerable positions. Um, the problems of exclusion and uh, these problems of con exclusion and continuing prejudice and sexism are, of course, exacerbated, or exacerbated by a number of trends in large society. Um, the new immigrants have abundant problems of their own, and they need to find ways to pursue their self-interests in the new society. If they don't, then they're going to be um, labeled as the other even more so than they already are. And they will become a society in which ethnic and racial groups are permanently segmented by class with the more favored members enjoying a higher if partial level of acceptance while other members of their groups languish in permanent exclusion and segmentation. But what's that mean if this is the world that we live in, what's that mean for us to be an American? And ultimately, what should it mean? We are at a very pivotal, uh, pivotal place in our um, historical development. And uh, we are faced with a clear choice of who we want to be. Do we want to look to our past a past that is uh, defined by uh, a, a blatant dominant minority social construction that has favored uh, white Europeans at the expense of any people of color. That's who we were. And it's so, in some respects, it's, it's who we still are. But we have a choice to, to move away from that, which is where we were heading, um, to a much more uh, diverse society where the color of your skin is not the primary determinant of your success in our society. 